greetings from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry, and we are in front of the potting shed in the Beatrix Potter Patch where the phlox is really going strong right now. Not much else is going strong. There's a couple geraniums here with no flowers on them, a couple sedums, a couple struggling oriental poppies that got sort of buried under everything else. But I've been but we won't be concentrating on this garden this morning. What we will be looking at is a garden that I've been working on since May. It's been a garden revival. And I want to start at the beginning when the garden was just full of overgrown weeds. And it was just an absolute mess. And I'll take you through the process that I went through. It's not quite finished all the way. But you can see that it's looking a lot better than it was after several weeks of hard work. So let's go into Kizzy's garden. You know, this is a good video for anyone starting a new garden from scratch in a wild field, or maybe you're trying to revive a garden that's since gone to rack and ruin like this one has. Shame on me for letting it get in this condition. But I won't let it happen again, I can assure you of that. Anyway, this is going to be a good learning video, I think, for many, many reasons. You'll see as we go along. So the first thing I want to do is gather all my tools together. I need lots of weed buckets, lots and lots and lots of weed buckets. I need a garden cart to throw all those weeds in. And my tools. I need a fork, a shovel, actually a small shovel and a big shovel, a couple root slayers, some scissors, some pruners, some cutters and some diggers and eventually we'll be using the compost but that won't be for a while. The first thing I'm going to do is take up the sidewalk as I have done already you can see I'm going to start all over with my sidewalk get all these weeds out save some of those good plants which are Rebecca's by the way and probably some daisies in there too and we'll start with the walkway and work our way around a job like this a plan is essential and of course where do you begin that's the question so it doesn't hurt to get out your notebook and decide where to begin and then just follow your plan so here we have my beginning is to clear off these brick walkways as you can see I've already done it I've actually removed the bricks I've gotten rid of the weeds saved a lot of plants that were in there and I'm just smoothing off the paths to relay the bricks of course somebody is interfering with my plan that Keats likes to garden with me, so I'll just move him as, as I get along <laughs> on my way. And then I want to clear the flagstone pathway as well, which is right down the center of this bed, which is how I normally get through it. And then I'm just going to take it one section at a time, thoroughly weeding each section. I've got a really good start over here. But I want to really eradicate those weeds. last thing I'll do in here is you can see where the trellises have fallen down. I'm going to fix those two. I'm actually going to shorten those. I think they're way too tall. I'm going to put four climbing roses up against those trellises, but I don't want them to be that tall. Those are just 16 feet tall. That's just too much. Well, it's just about the end of the day, and I pretty much got this sidewalk squared away as far as getting rid of the weeds. I have a lot of weeds here, but I also picked up some good plants that were growing in the cracks. So I am going to smooth out the bottom of the path here, relay the bricks. I'm keeping all that moss. I love that moss. I think that gives it a most wonderful old look. And the fact of the matter is these bricks are super old. They're almost 200 years old. They came from my friend's property down the road, which was built, her house was built in 1840, and they built all the bricks right there on their property. They had a kiln, and they had the whole works, actually, and these were extra bricks that had been in the barn for, you know, decades and decades, and she gave these to me many, many years ago. And so these have been here on this property, and I just love this um, wonderful old world look that the sidewalk has and it will remain a lumpety bumpety sidewalk because that's what I want. Hi Titus, that's my buddy. Where have you been? Beginning to see some progress here. I guess I'm about a fourth of the way through this garden and I'm 
Now I'm beginning to uncover the plants that I actually put in here on purpose rather than the weeds. So there are a lot of good plants in here. And now they're being exposed and the weeds are being disposed of. So I'm working on both sides. When I get bored with one side, I just switch to the other. When I get bored with pulling one kind of weed, I just go and pull a different kind of weed. And believe me, we have all kinds of weeds in here. In fact, we could have a lesson on weeds today. See, <laughs> what weeds do I have that you have? And I think one of the most insidious weeds, which I seriously hate, is chickweed. Because it's just ugly and it's messy. And even when you pull it, it drops all its little little seeds everywhere. And it's not easy to pull. It's one of those weeds you gotta really get down there and grab. And now I've got a new weed that moved in, and it is ugly. Bishop's weed. If you know Bishop's weed, you know how insidious it can be. This is Bishop's weed too. It is variegated. This is not as invasive, and I actually kind of like it. I keep some of it in the garden because I think it adds a nice contrast to just plain green leaves. But this one here, this one is really invasive, and it just appeared, started to appear on this property last year, so I really have to eradicate it. And this is one, you've got to get it out by the roots and look at how it's taken over this corner. This is gonna be a nasty job. These are my tools for wheat destruction. My root slayer, a couple little fork, fork things, and an actual fork for getting the tiny stuff. I just take an old, old fork and I dig a lot of these little things out. And then of course the tips of your fingers are good for plants that just pull out easily, such as this little guy here. Very pretty, but I don't want it. Well, well look at that. I have nearly cleared it all out. I've got several piles over here and here and here. And look at all the free ground I'm going to have. The lucky thing for me is that it rained so heavily, the ground was so soft, I was able to pull these out by the root one by one. And, but I'm still gonna go back in here with my shovel and get all the tiny little roots from the t little babies that are already starting to come up. Since I'm only able to get out here a couple times a week and it changes so quickly, I decided I'd better take a few clips here and there as I come out. So here we have the spiderwort hedge blooming beautifully and so far the brick walkway hasn't got too many weeds coming back. That's very good. But they are coming back along this path already so I have to go through here and pick those little buggers out before they take over again. The oxide daisies are in bloom. Behind that the peonies have already bloomed and already dropped their petals. Now in order to restore that trellis back there in the back, I removed all the old lattice and all the old wood and then James cut three feet off the top because it was just way too tall. Now I'm gonna reuse the lattice in some way and just refigure the trellis so that it can be used for morning glories and climbing roses. But I think it's so much better when it's much shorter like this. And it's still probably eight feet, eight feet tall, which is plenty. Now, I just love this area back here. It's always so peaceful and shady in the afternoon. But one thing about the shade is I sort of wish there weren't this much shade because I would love someday to have a little greenhouse right around there. And it would be possible if some of the branches on these large trees were removed and then it would get sun most of the day. Of course, it'd be great in the winter at any time because there won't be any leaves on the trees. But gosh, it'd be so pretty to have a working greenhouse back here. This is such a beautiful spot. I don't know why I don't spend more time back here. But you know what? I am going to in the future. It's peaceful. It's pleasant. It's shady. It's beautiful. I just love this bee. Actually, I think it's called a hummingbird moth. Isn't that absolutely fascinating? It looks just like a little hummingbird. That's the coolest thing. <laughs> and 
I think what it needs is a seating area. So I think right down along the path that I've laid here, right there at the end, instead of putting up more lattice, I am going to put a seating area right there. I'm going to build something. In there. Everything here was salvaged. This, the four by sixes were the tops of the trellises that we cut off because they were way too tall. And then I sunk them. I am sinking them, that is, about a foot and a half deep to make my sitting bench, the sitting part of my bench. This is the back of my garden bench right here. This is our old booth. Well, now it's the back of a bench. It's going to be a really nice place to sit back here under the Rose of Sharon tree where it's nice and shady. And just look at the garden from another angle. I can't believe it. Everything is level and even. Amazing. I'm not very good at that. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you'll know that um, as far back as 10 years ago, I was showing this fence that I built. Well, I cut out the pickets. There's over 320 of them. And James and I put the fence up together. But I'm just repeating the rabbit theme after all this is Hopalong Hollow and I'm repeating the silhouettes on the bench. Also this particular pattern that I made is also on one of the front gates over there at the driveway. This bench is perfect it seats two Now, because the lattice was broken and messed up in so many ways and I didn't have enough to go around, I'm having to reconfigure it, repair it, and put it up in a different manner than it was before. So I'm repairing it with lattice from another project that I've just dismantled. So using salvage, I'm just having to reconfigure this whole thing in an entirely different way. I think that's kind of fun. Oh, you can see our bridge that we're working on over there. We've got a lot of projects going on here. Which is really why I haven't been able to make any videos lately. Every week. Because I am so busy with this bed here. So what I'm left with are two large pieces of lattice. I'll cut each one of these in half and put a frame around it and then try to negotiate it back in between those timbers. I have a really nice space here and the good thing about this garden is that because I have worked on it for many years, I just neglected it for about a year. The perennials in here are going strong so I've got a good basis here in the garden with many many plants that are perfectly good plants but also a lot of new space to plant different things. So I'm definitely going to put in a few more climbing roses here on the trellis and maybe some annual seeds and maybe some more cone flowers and definitely going to do the Canterbury belts in this garden. So I've just been using all the bits and pieces that came off the original trellis here 
and making them work for me in a different way. So I've, I've had all these aged pieces of wood and I like this lattice because it still has all this lichen on it. So it looks like it's the same lattice that was put up, well, I guess about 15, 20 years ago. I didn't want new lattice, I just wanted to use the old stuff. this project I said it would take about a week. What a joke! This is probably my fourth week working on this and you can see how much it's changed in that time. All the existing flowers have come up and they've really filled in the spaces. I've put in a few pots of perennials that I got at a good deal at the garden center. I've still got all of this grass to get out of this section here which has got it's full of coneflowers and rutabecchias and irises, but other than that, it's just grass, grass, grass. So I'm still clearing the grass out over here. And as you can see, I pretty much cleared out that weedy section of goutweed, bishop's weed, right there. Don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. And there's the bench, and today I am going to be working on the lattice and leveling it out and putting in some vertical uh, posts at the top there. So also I've gotten a lot of little seedlings in here that I've taken out of the nursery beds. Um, you can see that the dahlias are coming up in the middle of this pea bed. Peas are looking good, the sweet peas. No blooms though. So maybe, maybe in another week I'll have this project finished. I hope so. It's really been a lot of work, but it's really looking great. And it is so lush. So what you see here, well, those are all flowers. Flowers and worthy plants. And it's daylily time, so all the orange daylilies are coming up. I can't help the daylilies. They just grow wild around here. But these Stella d'Oro daylilies are also coming up, and they're very, very pretty, too. So our next burst of color will most likely be the purple cone flowers and some more black-eyed Susan. So I'm back to my lattice. I hope to be done with that in a few hours. So this didn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Obviously I made it. So it's perfectly imperfect, but um, just about finished. Have to still frame that last piece of lattice in a little bit better. Doesn't have the framing on this side. If anything's off kilter, and it is I'm sure, that's fine. The morning glories and the climbing roses will hide it. Camouflage. What James had to help me with was that four by six along the top because I could not lift that up on my own. But um, this was this was a fun project. Now, when I was in there weeding, I pulled out, I thinned out a lot of the irises because they were just getting so close together and it was time to split many of them apart. So that's what I'm going to do here. In the meantime, I can get a lot of those nasty grass, grass weeds out and split these apart and plant them probably in that corner where the gout weed was, that nasty old gout weed. Started this transformation way back in mid-May, and here we are now in mid-July. And the garden has since then gone through many different transformations, um, not just in what I've done in here, but because of the different growth patterns of all the plants. So plants have already come and gone and gone past their prime, and right now we seem to be in the season of uh, Black-Eyed Susan. It's garden for so long, it's going through so many different blooming chapters and you're missing a lot 
of the color because I'm just doing this in segments. So what I'm doing as the plants bloom and then start going to seed is I'm chopping a lot of them way down. The perennials, for example, these daisies here, they've already flowered, except for a few of them. They've already flowered. They've gone to seed already in my garden, which is fine with me. Now I want to chop those all the way down to about a foot, maybe six inches off the ground. I'm going to do the same thing with the sweet William, the dianthus. There are few plants that don't do a world of good from a good, good cutting, a good, good leaf cut. And here's a pretty good example. I put this one in. This is a sage. I put it in and then it just started to dry out in the heat. I cut it, cut it way, way down. And now you can see that it's starting to put out new growth right there at the base. And the same thing with this little hyssop here. And I'm about to go do it to some cat mint or some napita. I work to do on the shady side, but I did put in a path and everything you see here was newly planted because this side I didn't film it very much before I started but it all looked like this it was nothing but periwinkle which I still have everywhere here on the end I plan on digging this out this can become a real nuisance I mean, it's a beautiful vine but if you're not looking for a ground cover don't put periwinkle out because you'll be sorry but I had to pull the periwinkle out of this entire side over here. These trees are not going here. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. And everything I planted in here I, is newly planted, either from seed or plants that I grew myself or plants that I got at the nursery. So we have some Napita. We have some Veronica's, Speedwell. Lots of irises, which I already had, which I transplanted from elsewhere. The liatris that I put in, there's some seeds with sweet william and sedum, which I transplanted from other parts of the garden. By just breaking off the stems and poking them in the ground. And they are going to be beautiful next year. They don't look like much right now. More dahlias in little pots. And here are some penstemons that I took from another garden. After they bloomed, cut them down about 16 inches. And now I am waiting for them to start rejuvenating from the bottom. And they are. I should cut them down even farther than this. I'll show you some that are really doing very well after they were transplanted. So here on this side, of the gravel path and up against the fence. More iris planted in a circle. And that's how I was taught to plant iris in a circle facing each other like this with the roots buried but part of the rhizomes showing above the surface. So here, yeah, this is what they should be doing. This is, oops, I didn't mean to break you off, sorry about that. But you can see all the new growth on these penstemons that were transplanted from another garden and then chopped way, way down. And you can see all that new growth coming out. Same thing with the lupin. I had to move the lupin out of a really bad spot and it's doing the same thing. It's rejuvenating itself. I also did a lot of lupin seed in here. This beautiful small tree with the fern-like leaves and the feathery, fluffy flower blooms, which are peachy and pink. They just grow wild here in East Tennessee. When you're driving the country roads, you just see them all the time. And we're lucky enough that one decided to grow right here in our yard. Rows of Sharon bush sitting here and three little red chickens went running across the lawn. And I said to myself, uh, wait a minute, I don't have any little red chickens, especially that small. Well, there weren't just three. Altogether, there were eight. 
eight little chickens moved in from I don't know where, but all of a sudden they were here. They decided Hopalong Hollow was the place to be. And now I have an extra eight chickens. So, well, I did lose some to predators last year, so I guess that just made up for all my little missing <laughs> kidnapped girls. That's just the way it is sometimes out here in the country. People disappear and other people just show up. It's just something you get used to. <laughs> I can't tell you how many cats are showing up over here. And they're always black. Almost always black. This is elephant garlic and I plant it in a lot of gardens. Not for the garlic, but for the flower heads. Every once in a while I'll dig one up and we actually use the garlic, but I just love these big heads. That, that's actually a pretty small one. Some big ones over there. Down here I put um, the uterus bulbs about two weeks ago. And you can see that the purple liatris is coming up. We have got sedum and yarrow and phlox and cold flowers. Our usual array of cottage flowers. And in the big pots, all the dahlias are looking pretty good. Some are a little shorter than the others. I put anywhere from two to three in each pot. And I staggered the liatris throughout this entire garden. There's a lot of nep nep nepita, which is actually cat, cat mint. And these um, black-eyed Susan are simply inevitable. They've been growing here for a long time. This is one of the standard plants that was already in here, as well as the iris. And I've already chopped down the dianthus a couple times, but I think this will be its last bloom. And scattered throughout the garden, once again, lots of the dahlia root that I put in. Just about time to get this Veronica and cut it way down again. So I've been through many chapters already in this garden without filming all of it. I learned a lot of things have already bloomed and other things have taken their place, but the walkway has stayed fairly clear. These little dahlia had we just put in not too long ago. They were mm, dahlia tubers bought on the cheap at the last minute, so they're still pretty small. This is a hyssop called Arizona Sunset Agastache, and it's a very small hyssop. It grows pretty closely to the ground. I really like that. And then along here, I just sprinkled seeds of little annuals, English daisies, gillium, um, just little bitty things. I've also got lupins growing here and there, and a lot of dianthus just spread throughout the whole garden. Once the oxide daisies bloom, I cut them way down, and you can see they're already starting back up again, so we're going to go on a second second journey. So pretty much it's returned to its state as a cottage garden. There are little spaces in between where I sprinkled Cosmo seed and zinnia seed. Unfortunately, those little red-headed chickens have been coming in here and poking around, and I'm afraid they may have gotten a lot of that seed, because I sure don't see any seedlings in there. I know we're here in the back. This is fantastic cauliflower. I cannot think of the name of it, but isn't this strange? All the petals are green, and it has all kinds of little babies popping up out of the top. It's just the oddest cone flower I've ever seen. And then I have little, probably a, maybe a dozen hollyhocks that I planted in my nursery bed that I've transplanted into here. So these won't do anything until next year, but how, hopefully next year, being biennials, they'll bloom. 
traveling up this trellis that I restored. Now you may remember my experiment with the peas, planting the peas in with the dahlias. Well, the peas look horrible right now because it's been so, so hot that <laughs> well, they did a great job climbing, but now they're drying out and turning into nothing but crispy critters. But inside the center, the dahlias are looking very nice, very nice indeed. They look beautiful. Peas, they're done for the season, I'm sure. Well, they still keep going taller and taller. And along here, a lot of just um, seedlings, seed, seeds were planted, sweet william, lupins, gosh, yarrow, I can't even remember everything I put in. And back along the trellis are four climbing roses. and a very large rose, rose bush. But this is their first year, so I don't, I don't expect much on the first year. We'll come back to this garden as it grows and gets better and better and better. But in the next video, I would love to take you inside the potting shed. It is a potting shed once again, but for about four years, I was using it for my art shop, but now it's reverted back to a potting shed. But the entrance is actually on the other side, so we'll take a look at that in the next video. While everything starts to grow and change, we'll come back to this garden. In the meantime, from Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.